Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. I got another special request for Minnie this time, um, Christmas theme. So I just went to Design Space because I love using Design Space images uh, because everyone can pull it up. And unless you go to make it, you don't have to pay for it. So even though this is $1.99, and it's a dollar if you have Cricut access like I do. But um, again, we can practice over and over and over until you feel comfortable um, and you don't have to pay for it. But we all have the same image, so that would be awesome. All right, so what you would do is you would go to images and type in Minnie Mouse and it comes up with all of these. Um, this mini is all the way towards the bottom. Let me see if I can find it somewhere. Um, shoot. Did I go down too far? I did. Okay, so let me find it at a, oh, here we go. So you have two options, but this is the one that I use. So here is, it's mini sweater, and this is the image number right here. So you would type in the pound sign M3E932C. <laughs> all right, so you click on it, and then, um, oh, these are all the ones that come with it. Wow, $30. Okay, anyway. Let's cancel out of it. Let's go to this file. Um, what I like about this image is that everything is broken up, all the little pieces. Like the hat is probably, um, the hat or the shoe, I can't even tell. I mean, her face is kind of long. Let's see, is her face? Oh yeah, her face is one piece, so that would be the longest piece. So, but kind of just in your head when you're looking at images, what I mean by it's all broken up is, the red is just this piece and then it's broken up by the white and then her face and then even her sweater it's two colors so here's the first green so it's just like a little smidge right so we can make that wide and it's still pretty short and then you have it's broken up by the green and then even this piece right here it's kind of thin so we can make this image probably pretty big and not have to slice anything that's the beauty of it um, let's see this image so i always like to also look at the right hand side panel to see what we have so uh, the reason why it was interesting to me is i wanted to see if the black pieces these black like the ears and the face um if they were separated or if it's actually part of the black background and in this case because there's no other black then all the black that you see is coming from the black background and then here's her white layer green light green all of that so all right let's make this and so this is what i would recommend um well let's see what, how big it is at 30 inches so at 30 inches it's 20 inches across i would recommend um slicing this like because you're gonna have to slice it in half basically right um hmm i'm I would say slice it right down the middle because her face, we can fix the face and not see any of the seams. But when you come down here, you know what? I think we can make this part one piece, like together on one piece of cardstock. All right, let's work on that. So you know what? Let's um, let's duplicate this so that we always have an image that we can we can reference. So when I like to reference something where it's just there so that I can see what it looks like, I like to flatten it. And the reason is because when you flatten it, you make it one line item. And so I'm not gonna be confused, like is this green on this image or is it on my visual image? <laughs> so I like to flatten it so that I always have it in the corner for me to see what it should look like. And this will help me later when I go to slice it to, rem to remind myself that like, where the colors go on top and where it's gonna hide the black seams. So, okay. So here is our 30 inch character. I think it's gonna look really, really good. Let's ungroup it and just kind of look at all of our pieces. So what I like, look at the bow. The bow is one piece. I love it because it looks, you know, it has all the details, right? All the little slits, but it's one, one piece. You pick up, you put down, it's gonna be awesome. So our pink is good. Let's look at our, um, our white layer or here's our red layer and let's slice out our red because right now it's it's showing as one piece right um, we can't cut it as is on the Cricut because it's over 12 inches across and almost 30 inches um, in length so let's take out our square 
and we're gonna slice. Remember when you're slicing, you can only slice two things at one time. So in this case, it's gonna be the square and the red. And so when you're slicing, I basically wanna break apart this image, right? I wanna break the hat away from the, the pair of shoes. So my hat is gonna be completely covered by the square and then everything else is outside of that square. So then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna take my mouse, grab the red, grab the square and slice. <clears throat> So we can get rid of the slice results. We don't need that. So we don't need the square. And as soon as I can move this, we can get rid of the square. So here's our little hat, right? And our hat is now its own piece. So that's great. Here's our shoes. Um, so the shoes is 11.8 by nine. So eight, Supposedly you can't cut this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock because it's 11.8 and it can only cut up to 11 and a half. But the way they measure um, this width is from the most left to the most right. So if I go and I tilt it a little bit, I'm changing what my most left and my most far right is. So see now it's 11.18 by 10, which I can cut on my Cricut. So, um, you can do that, or we can break up these two shoes, okay? So we can slice, but it's going to be difficult to slice because look how thin it is right here. So we're going to use contour. So when you're using contour to separate pieces, then however many pieces you want it separated into, you need to have that many um, copies. So two, I'm going to make a duplicate copy, and then I'm going to go to contour. So here is in contour, I'm going to say I don't want this. Um, oops, I still need to get rid of that. So I, did, I didn't want that shoe, but I didn't finish. So I don't want the shoe, and I also don't want this little guy. So I'm gonna deselect it, okay? So what's left is my left shoe, and then let's go back to the other one and click contour, and let's get rid of the other shoe now. We don't want this, oops. We don't want this, and we don't want this. So now we're left with the right shoe. So now it's not a problem because it's um, six inches by seven inches. You know, obviously we can cut that on the Cricut. Okay, um, let's go to our white. So our white is in a couple pieces, but I really like this file because look at the gloves. The glove is one, here's the other glove. Like everything has all the little slits and whatever, but it's one big piece. So I really, really like this design because it's gonna be easy to work with. So let's slice out these things as well. So I'm going to just scroll up a little bit, make this a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna slice out these pieces one at a time. So here is the glove. Now, if you look, I'm also covering up the black over here. It's okay as long as my mouse is only picking up the white and the square, it will let me slice, even though I'm in a lot of like traffic. So just know that um, where how you use your mouse is going to help you slice as well. So here's a little glove. It's all perfect now. Um, so I can move this over. Right, and you can start slicing out pieces here. So, um, sorry, I'm moving this all over the place. I'm going to slice out um, you know, this whole top section right here, the whole face, I'm going to keep it together just for the sake of timing. Um, and I'm going to slice here because I just want to show you how to go about doing this. You can be as efficient as you want to. Like a lot of times because I use glitter cardstock, I will slice out all these individual pieces so that I could be super efficient and just bundle up everything on my Make It page. So that's gonna be up to you. I am gonna show you what the Make It page looks like, but I'm just gonna slice out enough items here. So here I have that little puff, right? So I'm gonna grab it from down here and slice so that I can slice out that piece. And then um, let's see, should we slice out any more? Yeah, let's do... These are all still together. I'm gonna slice out the eyes. At least I think those are the eyes. I can't remember, okay. <laughs> Grab those two things and slice, and then we'll get rid of the slice results, and then we'll, we'll attack the next color, okay? So here we don't need this square anymore. Um, all of these 
you know, like gray pieces we don't need, right? They're just the slice results. So we can get rid of that. I'm just gonna put it all together and then grab it like that and delete. Okay, so our white is all done. Here's the face. Now the face, I wanna show you something. Um, let's duplicate it. And we're gonna turn this one, um, let's contour and hide all. And the reason why you wanna hide all and, oh, what happened here? Oh, hold on. Okay, so let me undo this for a second. I thought the face was all one piece, but it isn't. So let's zoom in for a second so we can really see this face. Okay, so here's the face. So interesting. So it has a cut right here and a cut right here. So this piece is not, I mean, it's part of the face, but the, the face is in two pieces. So this is what I wanna do. Let's bring in a circle. I wanna make the face completely enclosed, okay? And this is what I mean. So um, I'm going to make it so that everything touches. So I'm gonna do this circle right here on the edge like that, okay? Um, let's duplicate this circle. And I wanna close up this right here as well. So I'm gonna do something. Um, I'm going to unlock it and make it a little bit flatter like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna make it like something like that, okay. Then I'm gonna duplicate that. I have one more piece right here. Then by the time I'm done welding, this is going to be one enclosed face, okay? Move it up just a little bit, okay. So now grab all of these items and weld. And you're probably wondering like, why? <laughs> but this is why. We're gonna go to contour and click hide all. And it's gonna give me just a full face, right? And I'm gonna turn that color into black. So what's gonna happen is, um, let's arrange center the front. When we go to slice up mini, and if there's any seams running through the eyes, the nose, or the mouth, I'm gonna have this extra piece here that's gonna sit on top of all the cut pieces. And then I'm gonna have this here. So her face, there will not be any seams running through right here. So it's it's really important to do it for the face because I feel like you know your eyes are drawn, the face is the center of attention. You look at the face and if there are visible seams, you can't help but look at them. So in this case, we are minimizing the seams. And it's important, we had to close up these spaces, otherwise we wouldn't have been able, this would have been open right here and we wouldn't have been able to contour it. So that's why we needed to weld it right here so that it gave us an enclosed space so that we can contour out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And that's why we had to do it down here. All right, so I hope that was helpful and I hope that you get it. It's such a good tip. Um, and because it really does help. I mean, you always, you, most of the time, you're gonna have a seam running down right here. And while the eyes, like this white piece right here, it covers a lot of the eyes, but if there's a seam running right here, you can't help but notice it because it's so like central. It's the face, you look at it, so that's why. All right, um, let's see, so we're done. Let's zoom out. Let's see what else we have left. So there's the face, we did that. All right, so we have the tongue, the tongue is all good. Um, depending on the different colors that you have, I might make the tongue the same color as the, as the bow, otherwise you have kind of like two shades of pink there. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, this is the green, it's nine by five. Technically this all cuts on one piece of cardstock, but again, if you wanna make this more efficient, then you should slice out these pieces so that when you go to the Make It page, you can smush them all together. And um, I will slice out a few things here just to show you, because I do, 
if it was me making this project. Now, I'm not making this project. I'm only showing you how to do it in design space. So I'm actually not gonna cut this out. But if I were, I, I almost always slice everything out because this would have taken up my whole piece of cardstock, right? But I could probably get this to be like a five by 12, which then means I have seven by 12 next time, like a big piece of scrap to save and use for another project. So that's kind of, that's kind of my deal. <laughs> so I'm not gonna slice out everything individually, but I'm slicing out that whole three section right there, okay? So I'm gonna grab this and slice, and then I'm gonna grab this little piece here. Oops, I didn't wanna do that, here we go. I'm gonna slice that out, and I'm gonna get rid of this square. And you can also here, you can see the slice results. We don't want that one, so you could delete there. Delete, delete, okay. Actually, I feel like that's faster. All right, so that piece didn't delete for some, oh, did I delete a piece? Okay, all right, so now we have the green left. So the green is pretty efficient, and uh, the green, this green I'm not gonna mess with, but let's zoom in for a second. Now this green is in one, two, three, four, five, five pieces. But if we're gonna leave it all together like this, I am tempted to make this all one piece, okay? Because that will help you, instead of five pieces gluing and taping and making sure that it all um, is on their you know, equal spacing and whatever, you could just make this one piece and no one would know it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna make these really small and I'm gonna put it like right there. That's gonna connect these three pieces together, okay? And then I'm going to connect these two pieces together. Uh, okay, hold on. Where's my, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna connect it there. Then I'm gonna connect, so now all four pieces down here are connected because this whole piece is connected to this piece, which is connected to this piece, which is now connected to this piece. So the only piece not connected is this top piece and I'm gonna connect it right here, okay? So let's grab all this and let's weld it. So now instead of having five pieces, this is one piece, right? And you're not gonna, honestly, you're not gonna notice it. Like, this is, you're not gonna notice that this shouldn't have been connected. It's just gonna look like a sweater, I promise you. <laughs> okay, so that's all done. It's one piece, I absolutely love it. Um, the only thing we have left is slicing her up. So let's, um, let's move a lot of these things out of the way. Move it all over here. We'll move this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab all this. Let's just move it to the side. Okay, so this piece, our black background, all that's left is uh, 20 inches by 30 inches. So obviously too big to cut on our Cricut machine. So we're gonna slice it up into small pieces, smaller pieces, but still big chunks. I don't want like tiny, teeny pieces. I want like big pieces that we can um, put it back together like a puzzle and tape it all up. And then all our beautiful colors are gonna sit on top and hide the seams really, really well. So let's um, start slicing. So let's build our squares. So we know that this, um, we can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, right? With the 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. But I don't like dealing with half inches, so I'm gonna make my squares 11 by 11, okay? I'm gonna put it just right here, go over to your position feature and round to the nearest whole number. So 24.778 becomes 25, 6.2 becomes six. So what we're basically saying is 25 units over, that's our X coordinate is the one running across. So it's going over 25, go down six, and here's the beginning of our square. We're gonna duplicate this square and we're gonna put it really, really close to the first one, okay? So then 
we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So 36.2 becomes 36, 6.1 becomes 6. All right, so we have two flush squares, right? Um, and we can do the math behind it. So this is at 11. So 11 plus, or I'm sorry, it's at 25, right? So here's 25 plus 11 is 36. So this should be 36. So then I know they're right up next to each other, okay? So hit your shift key, grab both squares. So you can see it's selected here, duplicate, because we already have those two flush together. Now we're gonna have this set flush with the top set. So you just put it down and 25 is good. Change this to 17. Then I'm gonna duplicate again and I'm just gonna plop it down here. So 25 point something becomes 25, becomes 28. I have six squares that are completely flush with each other. I love doing it this way too, because later our pieces, you know they're gonna go right up to each other and you can tape it and then right up to each other. So it helps hide the seams when you know exactly where to put it. Um, okay. So over here, scroll down to the bottom and let's click on our black background and go to arrange, send to the front. And now we're looking to see where everything is cutting, okay? This is why this mini over here was important. So let's make her a little bit bigger. We kind of wanted to slice out her legs as one because I didn't want any seams coming down her legs. So we're gonna zoom in to see where all our seams are gonna be, okay? So let's look at this for a second. I don't like this, and sometimes you you have to do what you gotta do because that's just the way the image is, but I don't want this little puff to be a little piece by itself that I need to remember to then tape down. It's just a small piece. What I would like is, and that might not work, but what I would like is something like this where the this whole thing is together. But then look at my fingers. I don't want my fingers to be apart either. So it could very well be, or maybe we do something like this. So this top comes off. It's gonna come down the face, which is okay, because we know the face is gonna be covered with everything, and then we have the black face behind it. Okay, so I don't like this finger by itself. Dang it. So let's move this up a little bit. Okay, so I think right here is actually good because this seam runs right here. So my hat is one big piece. My fingers are one big piece. Okay, so, and it's not slicing at the legs. The legs, oh no, it's slicing right here. So I wonder if I can move this over anymore. There. So if I do that, it's not gonna slice at the legs at all. I want a little bit, it's gonna come right here. Um, can I move it over a little bit more? There, I can, okay. And that means this foot is by itself, this little thing is by itself. I don't love it, but what this ensures is that we don't have any seams. Let's see, this is coming down right here. So see the seam is going to be right here, right here. So it's going to be covered. See this right here. So it's at the point, right? So here's the point. The seam is coming down here. So the white's going to cover it. So this is not so bad. All right, so let's zoom out and let's slice. So we're going to slice the corner and the black image and we're just gonna go around and basically cut this up into six pieces that we can, <clears throat> that the Cricut can now cut. So keep going around. We're gonna slice our way through. And when you're done slicing, what I like to do is I like to move all my pieces over to make sure that all my pieces are there. And then I keep them arranged in the same um, order so that when I take it off my mat, I know exactly where the pieces go. 
see this is nice because you know exactly where these pieces uh, will go later okay not bad these are nice sizes this one I don't love because you know this part is its own piece but um, it's worth it to not have the seams at the legs so that's kind of you know the choice that you make okay and then you can get rid of all of this so just grab that delete okay so let's go to the make it page and see what we have um, oh it's incompatible because I still have my print and cut so let's get rid of this little girl over here and let's go to make it and now this is what I was talking about where because we um, sliced everything out just click OK this is fine um, we're able to you know really consolidate everything now what happened here oh I didn't I <sighs> This piece is all connected together, so that's the problem. So we should go back to the previous screen and slice this out, but it's okay um, since I'm not making it right now. So, so you can see like it's, if all these were individual pieces, we can put them in closer together, but this is kind of like the, the price that you pay. You choose how you wanna do this. So this can fit, I can do something like this. Get it to fit in here. Get this to be over here. Um, see, this, this could be better, right? Um, maybe. So you still have a lot of open space. So that's why if you sliced out every single piece, then we could have like put everything in here and then have extra paper to save for next time. All right, here is our black. Our black pieces are nice big chunks. I love it. Um, okay, here is our tongue, our face. Okay, I don't know why this is doing this. When this happens, I just kind of move it in like this. But you can see this piece, we can move it over here. You can really jam in the pieces when they're individual pieces. And I'm trying to move it over, okay. Oh, it's so slow. All right, let's see. And then you can even rotate the pieces so you can really get this up here like that. So this is more efficient, right? Because if you use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, then you have all of this for next time for another project. Or if you have your scrap and you have a seven by five piece of scrap, you can put it down and not use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. All right, here is our red sweater, or our, our red, our green, our dark green sweater is all one piece. It's gonna be awesome. Here is the bow. Now our red pieces, we can definitely move. So this shoe, you can click on the three dots, move object, and we can move it to our hat. So let's go over here. So now here's our shoe with our hat, and I feel like, can we get the other shoe to fit on this page as well? Maybe, let's see. Move object. Um, did I not click? Oh, there. I don't know, it's gonna be tight. Let's see. Oh, it's so close, but you know what? Let's see if we can shift these things around. Um, and it might not fit, I mean, we could try to do a lot of things, but still not make it work, <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, it's so close. Let's see if we can rotate this up a little bit. No. It's so close. <laughs> okay. Let me see. We're all 
almost there. Oh my gosh, it's like so, so close. Um, does anyone have it? Oh. Okay, I can't get it to fit, but we tried. If you can't, you can just go back, move object, and put it back on its old map. All right, I hope that was easy peasy. Let me know your um, comments, your feedback, questions. And then if you have a special request like this person, um, just let me know what you wanna do, how big, um, is there a name on the cake topper that you want? And then if you already have certain files or images, you can always just send it to me. It's Anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right, bye guys.